Hello all, so we will discuss now discrete Fourier transform that is DFT. So uh, first of all, what is the need of DFT? Uh, we already have DTFT, right? So is there any specific requirement that we have to introduce some new term called DFT? Because at the end we want Fourier transform of any signal only to analyze it in frequency domain. So is there any particular need for this or are there some drawbacks associated with DTFT? Okay, so all these questions will be answered in this video. So let's start. So first of all, yes, the need is the same that it is a tool to compute. It is a tool to compute Fourier transform, nothing else. Okay, but on digital computer. It means that we cannot find this as a man or as a human. We can find we cannot find Fourier transform of some signals. Okay, very easily we can find, but it will be a complicated task. And that's why the computer will compute it. And we have defined this DFT. Now let's draw some insights into this that what were the drawbacks of that DTFT so that we have to introduce this new term called DFT. So uh, first of all, let's talk about DTFT drawbacks. So DTFT, okay, that is which provided us a frequency domain representation for absolutely summable signals. Also, let's talk about the limitations of Z transform also because as we are in discrete domain, so Z transform is nothing but a universal transform. So let's, it is a generalized one of all transforms in discrete domain. So let's discuss that also. So what's the problem associated with both these two transforms? That uh, first of all, they have two features in common. The first feature is transforms, these are not the problems, these are transforms features, okay, both the transform that is DTFT and Z transform features, okay, so these are features. Transforms are defined for infinite line signals. And second, they are function of continuous variable. This is continuous variable. That is omega or we can say z. And therefore, they cannot be processed by computers or we can say any processors or specifically we can say DSP processors okay so computers and DSP processors okay. so from numerical computation point of view that is from numerical computation so with respect to this numerical computation these two features are very troublesome because one has to evaluate the infinite sum Okay, that is in both of them, DTFT and Z transform, we have this term that summation n is from minus infinity to plus infinity. So in order to evaluate both of these transforms, we need to calculate this infinite sum. Okay, and this infinite sum are not numerically computable. So it directly implies that this DTFT and Z transform are not numerically computable. Okay, so it implies that DTFT and Z transform are not numerically computable. So what we can do? So DTFT, these two problems are solved by DTF, sorry DFT. 
okay that is problem of dtft and z transform these two problems are being solved by dft and dft is a numerical numerically computable transform that is suitable for computer implementation and that is for dsp processor so always we define dft now we are moving to dft only so dft is transforms an endpoint sequence what it do dft transforms an endpoint sequence x of n note that in dtft transforms are defined for infinite length signals whereas tra transforms an endpoint sequence that is this our signal or again our sequence is endpoint that is n is belonging to 0 to n minus 1 that is total n terms so what dft do dft transforms this endpoint sequence into endpoint discrete domain samples or we can say discrete fourier domain samples and in order to differentiate this dtft and dft we denote it by x of k where this is the beauty that k is also belonging from 0 to n minus 1 that is n terms only and that is the reason that is called n point dft also so how it is obtained so we will deal with the derivation of this dft that is it is obtained obtained first of all let us write how it is obtained so dft is obtained by sampling dtft and you know dtft very well so in frequency domain okay or in case of z transform we can say on unit circle so we have to sample it on a unit circle or in frequency domain because unit circle is nothing but z transform on a unit circle becomes fourier transform only so we can say this this point is very important that DT, dft is obtained by sampling dtft in frequency domain okay so another point is that the dft is itself a sequence rather than a function of a continuous variable and the which was the drawback that both of them are the function of continuous variable that is omega or z and this then that is the reason why they cannot be processed by computers and the same drawback is being solved over here by dft and it is that this is also a endpoint sequence only it is after computing fourier transform again we are getting the same endpoint sequence and that's the beauty of this dft and that is the reason it is only used the tft is not used because any computation no human is being involved in any transforms all transform are being done in softwares only by computers so that's all for the introduction to dft uh, next is coming with properties okay so stay tuned